Willkommen nochmal. Guten Morgen. Welcome. Good morning on this fourth day of Congress. It's great that so many of you left their beds for Frag den Staat and Anna Semsrott. Um, he's very well known at Congress, so I don't need to introduce him any further. You know the thousands of lawsuits that um, German officials get from him and from his team and from all of you, because all of you can participate. So um, take it away, Anna. Thank you. We'll start with a, a small preliminary discussion. I'm going to have to dis disappoint you three times. If any of you got out of bed early to watch a music performance, that's not going to happen. And because Stefan's not here and I'm not going to do this on my own because that would be embarrassing. If any of you came because of the CSU, there's not a lot about them, even though it's in the subtitle of the talk, but that's only because I thought we'd have a minister of the interior of the CSU by this time, which hasn't happened yet. But everything's everything's better if you if you add despite the CSU at the end of it. And the third disappointment I have in store for you is this. Yeah. Okay. I was told my beard is uh, to blame. Please don't tell this to Constanze because otherwise I'm going to get comments on my beard for the rest of the uh, for, the, for the entire next year. 2017, the big feeling of the big political feeling I had that year was powerlessness, the feeling of being unable to do anything about what happens in politics, and that feeling is something you can also have if you look at the development of freedom of information in Germany. So the law that the laws that guarantee the access to state information. That's what the map of freedom of information looked last year, and this year it looks like this. Not a lot has changed. There were some initiatives in North Rhine-Westphalia. There was supposed to be a transparency law that means that information needn't just be published by request, but it would actually have to be published proactively, so um, many, many contracts would have had to be published online. They wrote that law, and then shortly before the election, the Social Democrats withdrew their approval, and that's why we don't have a transparency law in North Rhine-Westphalia. It's fairly similar in Thuringia, where the where the Social Democratic and Green government um, wrote a similar law and the uh, Social Democrats are currently blocking it. And it's similar in Berlin, where the Social Democrats are again blocking it. So it appears that this kind of law is something for the opposition, but when you're in power, you may not want to um, have this kind of law, and that's why we wrote our own law for we wrote our own transparency law for Berlin. You can look at it online. You can comment it. And then we are going to start a referendum in the next couple of years, because if this kind of initiative doesn't come from, from within Parliament, then we have to start it from without Parliament.
Aber ich glaube, noch ein bisschen, noch ein bisschen entscheidender sind die vier But Bundesländer. What's more decisive is the four federal states that you um, see in red on this map. Uh, They still don't have any freedom of information laws, and it gets even more absurd when you look at the situation in Europe. If you see who else has freedom of information laws, that's pretty much everything except uh, Luxembourg, Austria, and Belarus. So these four federal states of Germany are on the same line as Austria. And uh, those four are Bavaria. Bavaria still ha don't ha doesn't have a freedom of information law, which is which is unlikely to get under this uh, Christian social democratic uh, social, social union. Lower Saxony has seen a draft from the um, red and green government, but um, then their term in office was cut short, and there was no vote on it. But that may not be so bad because it would have been the worst Freedom of Information Act in Germany. And we have Hess, where the government has published a draft for Freedom of Information Law, which really is going to become the worst Freedom of Information Law in Germany because it provides, it means that the police and um, the secret services don't need to um, answer to Freedom of Information requests. And the fourth federal state without a Freedom of Information Law is Saxony. Die Schrift wurde vom Hersteller so geliefert. <laughs> the typeface was provided like that by the manufacturer. Schwarz-Rot hat the Conservative and Social Democratic government uh, promised to write this kind of law. They're probably focused on something else at the moment, and that means that the Saxon police, um, shown of which you see an example here, doesn't have to respond to freedom of information requests as they would in other states. There has been a relaunch of the website of the Minister of the Interior and also the Freedom of Information website now looks like this. Freedom of Information Act, Freedom of Information requests not at any cost. So that's the reputation within the administration. If you would like to compare these laws, you might would like to look at the transparency ranking. That was the preliminary discussion. Let's start with the first half. It's about the, the access to knowledge and the access to power. And we were going to look at uh, what we have been successful. One example, the army. The army uh, did a lot of advertisements, did a new way, and they uh, printed pizza uh, cartons. They distributed to pizza bakeries so pizza eaters could be recruited and we asked them what did this cost the answer is uh, 202,000 euros for pizza cartons for 707,000 pizza cartons and the, we are thinking that like it's usual with the, with the Bundeswehr the army only 400,000 actually uh, went into work and you can ask with every um, demonstration authority which demonstrations have been registered you have you can look into it and ask how many t participants are there you can ask for lobbyism the Tagesspiegel had a report on Gerhard Schröder they asked for documents from the economic ministry and we then saw that Gazprom could get um, a, um, a date within three days at the ministry and in the EU we asked the EU Commission what documents they had to so-called fake news the answer was this if you zoom a bit, it's, a, it's important. Yeah, it's essential to avoid either government or private forms of. Sorry, blanked out. Private forms of censorship. That's so beautiful. We're gonna make an art 
edition of it to hang somewhere. We have un uh, questions at Frontex um, about the training of the Libyan Coastal Guards, the so-called Coastal Guard. You said we are training them and we are putting a focus on human rights and we got their training materials, you know, 20 materials, their videos, and one slide is this, one slide, and uh, it says Menschenrechte, Human Rights. And that's not so much of a focus. It's more about uh, document recognition. It's about facial recognition. It's a slide about facial recognition. Is it the same person? Same person. And you can see on which uh, level these trainings actually have happen. And now um, it's no wonder that people die in the Mediterranean. Um, there was the G20. Um, the G20 um, team was pretty much overwhelmed by, by questions, so thanks to you. And before the G20, there were these, the Berlin Party Police, the Party Police, police who went home before G20 because they had three birthday parties at the same time and demolished some stuff, um, did some damage, and some people, uh, uh, according to rumors, just played around with their, with their weapons, and the police said, yeah, sure, get the information, but it's 100 Euro, and we thought, yeah, that's about 10 um, caskets of Sternburg. We didn't want to um, pay it ourselves, so we put down a crowdfunding page and wasted too much time, and we had all the money in half an hour, and we could pay that. And and got these internal research. It's not, not as important because of the content, but because of uh, the details on how the police goes with these research. Um, they went to the, pol to the policemen and asked, did you drink too much? And they said no, and that's the principle of it. And you find some very specific um, denials in these. The police says, there was no singing of Wuppertal um, uh, Sons of Horse and no demonstrative pissing in, <laughs> in with, with the whole um, squad. No collective urination for the purposes of a demonstration. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the first half time. So this uh, the advertisement, um, advertisement for the Fragmented Start app. You can download it in the beta version, and information freedom stays. Uh, hand work, handiwork. <laughs> Who has the power? If it's about powerlessness, I think much of this powerlessness comes from not knowing who has the power, who is deciding. And this year, I looked at the weather law, the law of the German weather service. So, traffic minister Dobrik said, we'll make all weather service data open data. So I called at the press and, and asked for the law, and they said, no, we we wrote it, but we don't have the, the draft of the law yet. So we went to the weather service. This is our, your law. Give me your law, law draft. No, it's not what we can do. This is the... So I went to Spiegel Online. They wrote about it, um, sent me this. They said, no, we don't have it. And what we have just based, is just based on a DPA post. So I went to the DPA, sent me the law. They said, no. It's about the press, from the press note, and I said, okay, who could have it? Looked at the whole plan, maybe referat DG22, I called, put down a few mails, they didn't say anything, and they didn't get a then I remember we got some emails from the emails from the lobbyists that were private that they were like this law, draft this law, so I wrote them, so I wrote you get me the law draft, and after 10 minutes I got it.
Dann habe ich den OCR. So I OCR did. I sent it to the traffic ministry and told them, <laughs> here you have your own uh, law draft. Die haben sich nicht mal bedankt. And they didn't even thank me. Completely oh, impolite. But this is not a singular example. All drafts went be after they've been passed by the governments and all statements from lobbyists are non-public and we thought we have to do something about this and together with Abgeordneten what we got a list of all drafts of the past four years and all lobbyists who um, submitted statements for them and we ended up with a list of 17 document 17,000 documents and wrote to all ministries and asked if they didn't want to publish those documents proactively we got polite refusals and thought okay we're going to have to, to change tact and build this database that was searchable for the documents titles and when you clicked a title of a document, it would automatically send a freedom of information request to the respective ministry. That led to so many requests being sent to federal ministries in within weeks as it uh, took f uh, um, then, then uh, within the, the entire past year, and we had to pause it at some point because all ministries of the ministry, uh, all ministers met and finally decided to publish all of those documents, and they're now all public on the ministry's websites. You can see them online on the websites of the respective ministries or just centrally escaped at stenungna.me. And we're very happy that this mechanism of mass requests is now being copied by others. This is RCU. They started a campaign about the travel costs of all EU commerce commissioners and now they have to publish their, their travel budgets. This leads us to the third half. Open knowledge is empowerment. It's how can you, how can you, what can you do about this powerlessness? A great example of this is the police of Cologne. Uh, Cologne. A year ago, they were facing heavy criticism, criticism because they were being accused of um, conducting racial discrimination and. They, we approached them and sent a freedom of information request and wanted to get all of the protocols from that New Year's night. So these are being written by individual police people and being submitted to the archive. And we wanted to know what they wrote into these because that would allow us to to know what actually happened. Um, they refused this and said they would conduct an internal investigation. We sued them. And the Cologne Police Department will hopefully be forced to open these documents, but probably at 2019, the earliest, because uh, everyone's uh, very busy, but um, that's okay. We want to set an example and want to make it known that this kind of thing has to be published. And, but, but we were getting some very nasty um, comments on Facebook accusing us of being um, disrespectable desktop hooligans. And we thought, mm, desktop hooligans, yes, that's us. <laughs> and um, so we started a campaign um, to legalize office technology instead of pyrotechnics. 
Um, yes, so we have the desktop hooligans. So what do desktop hooligans do? They sue. They sue out of principle. These are some of the authorities we've been suing in the past year. Some quick examples of as long as we have time. The job center in Berlin, Friedrichshain-Kreuzberg, we sued them because they wanted to they they wanted us to show information to uh, for our freedom of information request um, we told them and said um, no that's not we there's no need to provide identification for a freedom of information request they said well that's up to us to decide and we told them no it's really not um, but apparently these can only be provided to uh, these require identification because they um, because there are fees attached but um, even that response had fees attached so it was entirely absurd and we won um, we sued the defense department twice the first was about contracts with YouTube stars they get YouTube YouTubers to advertise to get young recruits, and we wanted to see those contracts. And the Department of Defense said, "No, those are um, those are business secrets of the YouTubers. We wanted to um, see them in court." And a few months later, they said, "Oh yes, we had another look, and we don't actually have those contracts." So they knew they contained secrets, but didn't know that they didn't have the contracts. We also wanted to know what speeches the Minister von der Leyen gave during non-public events, which she often does. We wanted to have the protocols, but um, they told us, no, those are secret. We sued them, and a few months later, they said, we don't actually have any speech drafts of Minister von der Leyen. So they knew that those were secret before they knew that they didn't even have them. Those were two lawsuits that we want quite easily. We don't know much more. We just know about the knowledge man management of the uh, Defense Department. And if you want to sue somebody, we can support you at transparenzklagen.de. We give you lawyers and money for your lawsuits. lawsuits. And that leads us to overtime. All of this powerlessness just increases when the laws that we would like to apply cannot be applied. And um, so we can't ask the Secret Services according to the Information Freedom Act. But there were older documents we could get from the archive of the Federal Archive, which we can't anymore because the law of the Federal Archive uh, got changed, so the Secret Services don't have to give the documents there anymore. So not only uh, new documents, but all documents are secret forever now. The BNW, uh, BND, the Secret Service, was very happy about that and said they, the, they did this so uh, people couldn't ask uh, the archives anymore to like um, undermine the secret services. We saw in single cases what happens. That's a Jewish rabbi, Shlomo Levin, who got killed in the beginning of the 80s by a neo-Nazi, and the secret service knows something about this. But because of these changes, they don't have to show these these files we could have sued for before and the BND NSA all these things they don't have to go into the archive and will be secret even in decades oh that's that's a great illustration of powerlessness we thought what can we do thought what other laws there were. There was the, the environmental information law. This is a very special thing for environmental infos, and that's on uh, European level, so secret services can't go into that. So that sounds far away, but it's very close. But it's about everything related to environment, everything what's... <laughs> 
the foul smelling or something is everything environmental stuff so if you have something about a bomb or something it's an environmental information according to this so we uh, wrote the secret service after this law we would have like to have everything about environmental information and so they said no this law doesn't apply to us and so we sued them against the secret service uh, this will be done by the administrative court in Cologne. So we went to the outer secret service with all your environmental innovations, and they said no, and so we sued them against the BND. The federal administrative court will decide on that next year. It's very interesting how the BND reacts against this. This case is like 15 uh, pages long, a bit background, a bit of research on Frankenstaat, where they say Frankenstaat is financing themselves through so-called crowdfunding, which is true. And here it gets interesting why this uh, why they can't be sued. This standing me as a person of Frankenstaat uh, is just about uh, researching everything they can about the, the state and not actually about the environment and they said this was not um, not case, critically case oriented but just uh, went out and willy nilly and I looked up how many um, uh, questions we sent and it was like three and and what's really mean of us is that this um, this case seems to just be there to show the BND as a bunch of idiots. But we actually do want to save the environment, and sometimes we save it if we save it from the BND. Both of these cases costing about 10,000 euros. If you want to support us, you will get some stuff if you donate to us, a certificate on um, this. You can write why you, why you are helping just because you are want to know everything, because you, are, you want to present them as idiots, because you want to abuse it, or whatever the hell you want. Thank you. Good. That was eigentlich. Have I still noch Zeit, yeah? Wow, we have okay. Zeit for a Frage. Thank you, Arne. And da alle hier im Saal ja Arne gleich ansprechen können, frage ich als erstes den Signal Angel, ob es eine Frage gibt, und das scheint so. Danke. Uh, personally, I have the signal engine first, first if there's a question. There's no question, but a lot of uh, standing ovations, so to say, uh, from the audience there. Also, wo soll man seine Bitcoins hinschicken? Und Ethereums und uh, alle anderen Coins, die man so hat. Uh, yeah. Da haben wir gerade sehr viele welche übrig. Uh, yeah, we have Bitcoin. Uh, I think we've got a lot of Bitcoin. Yeah, I think we do have something there. The assembly. The Assembly of the Knowledge Foundation and from Prag den Staat findet ihr, wenn ihr aus der Halle rausgeht, in der großen Assembly Halle vor dem Kids Space. Uh, big assembly hall uh, when you get out of the hall. Da kann man die T-Shirts und Hoodies nice. und alles Mögliche kaufen und wahrscheinlich dich dann auch gleich noch finden, oder? Mm -hmm. Sehr schön. Dann wünsche ich well. euch einen great. wunderschönen Tag, den letzten Tag des Kongresses. So, oh, da wünsche ich euch einen schönen Tag. Die habe ich. Oh, there's a question, wir können noch actually. eine Frage nehmen. Ja, ich habe das große Vielen Dank für den wunderbaren Talk. Ich ähm, habe auch die talk. Plattform selbst schon mal genutzt für ein Umweltthema sogar, den technischen Veränderungen von Julien. Ähm, aber meine Frage ist, ich wohne in Bayern But und in Bayern äh, gibt es die Möglichkeit Bavaria. eines Volksbegehrens. Ähm, 
bestünde like die Möglichkeit, dass wir in Bayern der CSU referendum. so ein äh, Informationsfreiheit in Bavaria with the CSU auf the Conservatives ähm, we can ja, have this law ist die Idee hinter dem äh, Schreiben des Berliner yes, Transparenzgesetzes, das dann auch äh, redeployen zu können in anderen Bundesländern. Ähm, das ist sicher in einzelnen äh, Aspekten dann unterschiedlich, law. aber sehr gern, äh, das And ist CC0, kann man sehr gern äh, weiter woanders benutzen. But you can use CC wir haben jetzt noch Zero Zeit für Mikrofon 6 und danach müssen wir well. leider aufhören. Hallo, zunächst einmal vielen Dank für deine bzw. eure Arbeit. First of all, Meine Frage thank ist, you wie kann man euch noch helfen, wenn man work. euch nicht Geld geben kann oder möchte? I was wondering how, um, indem ihr selbst Anfragen stellt, ähm, zum Beispiel, und das ist, glaube ich, das Offensichtlichste, aber auch, ähm, wenn ihr äh, Ahnung ein bisschen von äh, Jerusalem habt, äh, helft ihr uns sehr mit ganz vielen äh, der Klagen. In, uh, ähm, natürlich in law, äh, findet ihr den Code auf GitHub. Äh, Freude heißt das Projekt. Ähm, da GitHub sind wir sehr, sehr dankbar für jegliche Form der, der Mitarbeit an der Plattform. Wir entwickeln da so ein bisschen was weiter gerade und ich glaube, da kann man noch mehr helfen am Ende. Developing things okay. on the platform, and we can do with nochmal. each and every helping hand. Good. Thank you, Arnold.